Hey everybody, this is Brian over at Obedia, and today I'm going to give you guys a quick overview of Cakewalk's brand new Sonar X1. I'm using X1 Producer. Uh, there are a couple other versions of X1. Uh, as always, there's more introductory version and things like that. And let's do a little walkthrough here of uh, some of the new features and how the program looks. So if we click on file and we go to new, we get the new project file dialog box. Uh, we've, get, we've gotten to know this with Sonar over the years. And uh, all we got to do is click from a number of templates that come with the program and uh, give one of our projects a name. And then we'll just go ahead and hit OK. And this is where you're going to notice that the look of X1 is very different from uh, previous iterations of Sonar. Uh, you're going to notice that the faders are, are definitely a little, a little more polished looking. The channel strips are more polished looking. The overall color scheme of the DAW in general is very different. Um, I actually really like this. And you're also going to notice that it's much more consolidated than um, previous iterations. Uh, to where your mixer is now quickly available right down here. You have more of a uh, traditional track and track inspector view over here on the left hand side and this is very akin to uh, things we've gotten to know in some other DAWs uh, that we've been working in in the past and so this this is very cool because this gives you quick access to the entire channel strip on the left hand side as well as to your master channel strip and as you click around you'll notice that this will change the channel strip that's displayed on the far left hand side right here so this is really cool for workflow this is also very good for increasing workflow when it comes to doing things like adding effects if I want to add an effect to this channel strip I need to click on the plus sign uh, on the effects heading here for the channel strip and I can just quickly select an effect. And that's a real fast way of being able to instantiate new effects on my channel strips, uh, make changes to them and then just close them up. And then if I want to call them up again, just double click on the name. So this is very cool, it's very straightforward and again I think that's really great for overall workflow. You've got access to all of your traditional uh, channel strip features here, of course, panning, record, your uh, read-write parameters and things like that, muting, solo, so on and so forth. And of course, you've got your channel strip to change your volume. You can also change your input and output settings and things like that from here. So this is all moving towards a very consolidated, very clean look for the software. Your primary tracks here in the arrange view of course have the controls that you're that you're very much used to. Input echo, there's also track freezing, mute, soloing, uh, record automation, uh, record enable, things like that. Also your tracks will be denoted as to what kind of a track you've got uh, based on these little icons right here. So here's a waveform icon, there's different icons based on if you have an instrument track and things like that. The transport is now sitting uh, tidily up here at the top of your range window and uh, this is very much uh, the traditional transport that we know. Uh, you can break this out and move it to a different location if you want to. Uh, but it does initially sit up here at the top of your window. Now one thing that you're going to notice is uh, this tool selection area over here. And this is uh, again kind of a newer thing uh, to where you have quick access to these tools that you'll use for audio editing, erase, draw, edit, things like that. But you'll also notice this option for the smart tool. And the smart tool is pretty cool because what this does is it gives you quick access to all of these different features in one tool. And so if I import some audio, and we'll import audio by clicking on file, going to import audio, and we can just select a loop here. So now we've just imported a loop into uh, Sonar X1. And you'll notice using the smart tool, if I move my, my mouse around, my cursor around on my waveform, this changes the tool that I've got depending on where I move the mouse to. And so this is really useful again for workflow because you won't be clicking and selecting multiple tools and things like that. You can just use the smart tool and have access to moving or to being able to select waveform and things like that. So that's also very useful for workflow. Of course, as is usually the way in a DAW, if you double click on a waveform, you're going to have the waveform edit uh, for that waveform. So you notice that now I've uh, swapped places with my mixer 
where I have now loaded up my loop construction section. And this is cool because you're going to notice that there is definitely a focus on beat slicing. And as I take a look at this loop that I've imported, you'll notice it's been pre-sliced. And by that pre-slicing, it's been set up so that it's gonna keep in time with the tempo of my project and also with other loops that I import into my project. So if I select another audio track and I import some more audio from, let's say, this, this same loop library that came with a Sonar X1, I can import another loop and then because uh, there is, as I say, a focus on beat slicing, you'll notice this one's also beat sliced, there's a big focus on that and what this will do is it will make it so that these uh, loops will quickly play in time with each other. So I think that's pretty cool because again, there's a big focus on just starting up and just making music. And you don't have to use these loops, but it can be really useful to be able to pull these up, drop them into a project and just start to get some inspiration off of them. Inserting a soft synth is uh, again, a, a very easy process. And to do that, we just gotta click on insert, go down to soft synth, and now we can select from the various soft synths that we have installed on our system. I'll just use the TTS-1. The insert soft synth options box will open up and here we get to choose from the many different options that we've got before we instantiate this synth. We can set MIDI output settings and things like that. I usually like to turn on synth property page because this will open up the interface for the synth and let me quickly uh, start working on it. So I'll hit OK. And now I've got the TTS-1 opened up immediately and I can start making edits uh, to my plugin and things like that. And you'll also notice that, again, in keeping with, uh, as I pointed out earlier, you're going to have a different icon for each track type as you create it. So right here, this is an instrument track, and you're going to notice it's got the little keyboard here, so that'll let you keep track of what kind of a track it is that you have instantiated here in Sonar X1. The audio setup and other preferences have been consolidated as well. If you click on edit and go to preferences, you'll get the preferences dialog box and you're going to notice that uh, everything's kind of been consolidated here. There's an audio heading, a MIDI heading, things like that. And as I scroll through these, I can make changes uh, to my audio setup. So if I want to set up my audio driver, I can click on driver settings and I can select my playback timing master, things along those lines. Uh, under playback and recording, I can select what driver driver mode it is that my, my sound card is operating in and I can also set the other tweaking options for that and then if I go to the MIDI section I can enable MIDI and the various MIDI ports that I have on my system and I can make other changes such as control surface and things like that. So all of this has been consolidated into uh, an, an easier and more visual uh, format for quickly doing your settings in X1 and after you've made your settings just simply hitting apply and closing them up and now you're ready to go. These are just some of the basic features in X1. I just want to be able to show you guys the new visual look of X1 and uh, how it's been shifted around a little bit. Uh, and I think this is going to match the needs of a lot of producers a lot more readily. Um, and it's going to work really well for a lot of Sonar producers out there who have been working in Sonar for a while and uh, have been wanting to see some changes to the interface and things like that. Uh, I hope you enjoy what you've seen here. We will be doing some more overviews of Sonar as time goes on. If you have any questions or thoughts, please feel free to get in touch with me at brian at obedia.com or on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash obedia tutor. Until next tutorial, take care and happy music making to you guys. Hey.